everybody, welcome back to America's Heroes. I hope you guys are having a good Thanksgiving, or have had a good Thanksgiving. Hello Earl, how you doing? Pretty good, Josh, how you doing? Pretty good, how was your Thanksgiving? Good, I didn't do a thing. <laughs> Stayed home and did nothing. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> Alright, so this week's episode of America's Heroes, we're going to be talking about all the current comic book TV shows. So we've got Arrow, Flash, Daredevil, uh, Gotham, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, Supergirl, and the new Netflix TV show, Jessica Jones. Which one of these TV shows, going or ba based off the source material or the comics, do is doing the best job in, uh, say, using the source material to their advantage? Jessica Jones, without Jessica. a doubt. Definitely? It is, it is pretty much the exact same thing as it is in the comics. That's good. That's really good to hear. Yeah, the only difference is, the um, the comic did reveal that she had powers as soon as they did in the TV show. Yeah, but that's fine. I mean, you know, for the first scene where she's throwing the guy through the door, her uh, office door. Yeah. Straight out of the comic. Oh yeah, I saw that. I read I read the comic first time I bought it. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah, it was amazing. Yes. Yeah, there's some other stuff in there that was <laughs> just like in a comic. You know, it's pretty, <laughs> yes. Pretty yeah. violent and. Very, very sexual. Sexual in nature. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which of these shows do you think has been doing the worst in using its source material? Gotham. Gotham? Just based on the fact that it's so different from anything ever done in the comics, that it's pretty much totally opposite of the source material. They've pretty much taken almost nothing from the source material and decided to go off on their own. Not that that's a bad thing. Makes for entertaining television, yeah. but it's just nothing in the source material. It's kind of like uh, someone heard about this Batman type character from a drunk guy in a bar, or something like that. Right, and they go, "Oh, well, let's do something about the the city and the corruption of the police department." And and Bruce Wayne, as a child, his his desire to find out who his parents' killer was. Yeah, it's a good show, just not as compared to the source material. Now, when I first heard of the TV show Gotham. They marketed it as the murder of the Wayne family, as mm -hmm. Jim Gordon um, trying to figure out who killed the Waynes. And that was what intrigued me, because I don't think any comic book has ever done anything like that, or have they? Not for as, uh, the extended amount of time as they're doing the TV show. There have been various stories done about Batman as an adult, or on alternate Earths, uh, tracking down and you know, capturing his parents' killers. But nothing as procedural as uh, as Gotham has done. You know, showing more background about the city and the uprising of the villains like Cobblepot, mm -hmm. uh, Selina. Uh, they're still throwing you a bone about Joker. Yeah, now, uh, Cobblepot, I think, is... Uh, Cobblepot, uh, Harvey... Uh, not Harvey, um... Uh, Harvey oh, Bullock. Yeah. And uh, Jim Gordon, I think, are the three actors in that show that are absolutely perfect for the role. Right. Best characters on that show right now. Um, I think, uh, as they bring in new actors, because as they did this year, we're bringing in Michael Chiklis as the new captain. Um, and then, of course, you know, bringing in new characters for, like, the new commissioner. And, uh, of course, you have Marina Bacher, and she's, she's in, you know, she was in last season. But she's in there as uh, Jim Gordon's new love interest. So I, I think as the show continues and grows in popularity, you'll start seeing more high-profile actors and other actors want to do this show, which will give it a uh, bigger Hollywood-type flair. You know, when, when a show gets extremely popular and critically acclaimed, you start attracting a different kind yeah. of uh, actor. Um, example, like different TV shows like Will and Grace, Friends. They would get big name stars in there occasionally to play a parent or a brother or sister. And I think Gotham's going to start doing that soon. Yeah. Now, I like the actor who's playing uh, Edward Nigma, the Riddler. Yes. But, I, but the problem with that is I see this as a prequel to Batman, and Riddler is roughly the same age as Batman, so for me it doesn't fit. But I still like him as the character. I just wish they would have introduced him in like maybe a movie or a... Uh, new TV show yeah. with Batman. And then, and Riddler himself is not so much a killer. No, no, As not. Riddler is in, in Gotham. So there, there's a little deviation from that, but it seems like all the villains in this 
in the show are in fact just murderers. Yeah. Um, even and, Selena. Oh yeah. And one of the things that attract me attracted me to the Riddler from the original uh, Batman animated series is that he was one of the more uh, sophisticated villains. And in this, he's just uh, yeah, he's just quirky. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's a quirky kind of scorn person who had his infatuation with a co-worker and, well, we all know how that, well, yeah. it went sideways. Yeah, it did. <laughs> now, thinking of, uh, speaking of villains, uh, what do you think of, uh, uh, what do you think of the interpretations of uh, Fish Mooney and uh, Falcone? I like Falcone. Fish Mooney, not so much. Um, new character created yeah. for the TV show. Um, Jada Pinkett Smith was a little over the top with her acting. Um, if they were just made the character a little more just straightforward and um, get her, I mean, she didn't get her own hands dirty and things mm -hmm. until later. And I understand why you do that. Anytime you don't want anybody who's higher up in a crime organization, you know, getting their hands dirty, you know, it's hard, it's easier to get caught, yeah. you know, and put in jail. But I just felt that. The character was kind of lackluster, and the way the acting came off, it came off as just forced. Okay, yeah. So what is so in Gotham? What's your favorite uh, character and least favorite character? Ooh, favorite character. I would have to say that I'm a real big fan of Jim Gordon. Yeah. Mainly just because of his attitude as a police officer. <laughs> he's he's he actually. I mean, he is willing to take down. The city government from the top to the bottom, mm -hmm. just for what he believes in. But yet he also has a few things in his background, which you kind of, you know, you start wondering about. And you're like, okay, well, you're fighting against this, but you also did this in your background, you know. So um, I think that was pretty good. Um, Lee's character, I'm not even going to use Fish Mooney because, you know, of, of this season. She wasn't really in this season. Yeah. Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne, yeah. He's too whiny. Yeah, and the fact that he just up and found the Batcave right away. Yeah, then he goes off on Alfred because Alfred destroyed the uh, the computers. And then he's like, oh, Alfred, you, you're fired. And then next scene he's like, Alfred, I need you back. I mean, come on. That's I mean, that's, really... that's writing on the, on, on the screenwriter's part. But the, the way the kid is just like, I think these self-entitled people you see these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, moving off of Gotham, going into a newer, newer show, Supergirl. Uh, what did you think of Kara, Kara Zorro's um, origin for this TV show? Pretty good. I, I thought it, it melded pretty well, uh, like they've done in the recent uh, DC since they started 52. She was actually sent to care for her baby cousin yeah. on Earth. And, um... She got like sidetracked from uh, you got, uh, the flight plan. Yeah, tripped in the wormhole. I think. Yeah, and she came out, and he was already older than her. Mm -hmm. So um, I like that aspect. I like the aspect that he didn't take care of her or train her himself because he's so busy doing with every you know everything else, protecting the world and you know having a life. He set her with this family, and uh, they also had an, a daughter, which would be great because she had like a sibling, so to speak, to grow up with. And um, I just thought it was good. When I first saw the trailer, I'm like, oh, my goodness. This is going to be Ally McBeal. And, you know, you have Calissa Flockhart in there who was in Ally McBeal. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be just like Ally McBeal. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be a TV version of a chick flick. <laughs> and it wasn't. I was, I was surprised after I watched the first episode. Yeah, me too. I really liked it. Yeah, I think Melissa Benoist is, she's going to have to come into the character if, a lot of her lines, the way she delivered them, felt a little contrived and a, and a little, I keep using the word forced, but it's true, like forced and like she doesn't understand the character, which is understandable. It's only the first season. Yeah. I saw the same thing in Arrow. Um, a lot of it happened in Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. too, uh, from what I've seen. But this, you know, there's another series that they just, first season, two seasons they've hit it off the ball. But Supergirl, I think it's going to do well. You, uh, do you like that the fact that they're not actually overly sexual sexualizing? Uh, oh, sure. Her? Yeah, because actually, 
female superheroes need to not be sexualized because they, they are there for the younger children to look up to. We as adults already know about, you know, how things are sexualized. Yes, very much. Um, and, and children just need something to look up to. Mm -hmm. You know, they have to have their own hero. I mean, that's why you get younger kids uh, watching and reading The Hunger Games. Um, they like Hermione from yeah. Harry Potter and stuff like that. And those characters were never sexualized. They are strong. They get the job done. They're they're smart. They're uh, willing to do whatever it takes to to get you know to you know the job done basically. And with Supergirl, if you over sexualized her, it it's just not right. Yeah. It it would be pointless because she's always going to be looked at as Superman's cousin. Yes. Yeah. Wonder Woman. It's her background <laughs> with her creator is a different story. But yeah, that's, that's, the that's a totally different story. Now, uh, what do you think? What did you? What were your first impressions when you heard that uh, Jimmy Gore, uh, Jimmy was going to be uh, African American, a black guy? No problem. Yeah. As long as it fits into the story correctly, which they did, I, have, I having him it. come over. Yeah. yeah, having him come over at the request of his cousin. I mean, at the request of his best pal, Superman, mm -hmm. to come help uh, Superman's cousin. I thought it was great. No problem with it. And I like that right now they're not saying Superman. They're just going with the uh, Man of Steel or right. the big guy. Or her cousin. Yeah. So that's fine. Uh, I think in the upcoming episodes they're going to start. I'm, I'm behind by a, an episode or two, but I think they're going to start calling him or reference him as Superman in one or two. Mm -hmm. Now, what uh, they introduced a new uh, character that we all know from the comic books is a superhero, uh, Red Tornado. Mm -hmm. What did you think of... His design as in costume and him as a character on the show. I actually haven't seen that episode yet. Nope. Just by looking at the design, I don't <laughs> care for the way he looks. But those pictures could have been uh, pre-production yeah. and not post-production after they've done all the CGI and everything on it. So um, until I actually see it, I'm not going to make a judgment on it. Okay, yeah. Some people are thinking it's uh, just like DC's vision, which it kind of is in a way. Mm -hmm. But DC has a mirror mirror character of everyone from Marvel. That they did. And and vice versa. versa. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's go into keeping in the DC universe. What do you think of this season of Arrow so far? A whole lot better than last season. <laughs> last season was really kind of boring. Um, it's all pretty much, even though at the end, or near the end, they were talking about it's it's Ollie's master plan. To me, it's a pity party mm -hmm. for Oliver. You know, woe is him and and everything. And bringing everybody back to life using the Lazarus Pit, it's getting old. Yeah, it is. Um, but this season, been fantastic. It's been really good. They bring in Neil, Neil McDonough as uh, Damien Dark. Oh, yes. Uh, I love, love the actor. I oh, love he's creepy. Oh yeah, he is. He is so creepy because he was in uh, an FX show called Justified, mm -hmm. and he played like this this really powerful mob guy, and he just gives off this vibe like, you know, I'm sitting here talking to you very calmly, but I would have you know I could kill you right in front of me, and it wouldn't bother me at all. Oh yeah, and it's the same way with Damian Dark. I've only seen one instance of where he had like some concern. Or maybe fear on his face this season, and that's when he went to uh, he was choking uh, Thea, and realized his powers weren't working on her. Oh yeah. So and then he's just like, uh oh, what's up with this girl? <laughs> and I think I, the whole cast. I mean, there's a couple of characters on there I find really annoying. Yeah. But uh, I've I'll let those go because they're inter integral parts of the of the show. No. What did you think of uh, the CW bringing in, finally, uh, magic or sorcery into the show? Do you think it was the right move? Yes. I think it was because you can't ignore that aspect of it with Constantine already being on NBC. Mm -hmm. And I actually believe that this is their way of testing it out. Yeah, me too. <laughs> did you see the episode with Constantine? Yes. I, I like the nod that they put to NBC, the... Peacock the, the peacock feather, yeah. yeah. His burn. And He's like, I need a peacock feather. All this stuff to uh, put Sarah's soul back in her. And what do you need the peacock for? No, I just need to scratch, scratch my back. <laughs> that was funny, yeah. Um, yeah, they needed to actually introduce magic. And what other way, what better way to do it than introduce Constantine, who was in a movie, mm -hmm. 
had his own series on NBC. Yes. And they brought him back for this episode. And um, the ratings for that episode, they said all, I think all the TV shows on Wednesday had seen a dip that night, except for uh, Arrow. It ratings had actually gone up. Oh, yeah, Constantine and, is a very big character. Oh, yeah. And it was just announced that he will probably be showing up in the second season of Legends of Tomorrow. Uh, I think Warner Brothers said that they might do a season two, but just because the budget for the first one is so big, they aren't still sure if they're going to do one. But hopefully they will bring him mm -hmm. back for Arrow or even give him his own TV show again. Right. That'd be, that'd be cool. Yeah, I, I, with Arrow, everything stemming from last season, there was a lot of mistrust and distrust yeah, going on exactly. between everybody, especially Diggle and Ollie. Mm -hmm. I'm glad they got that taken care of. Now they can get back to doing what they, what they need to do. Um, Ollie running for mayor happened in the comics pre-52. Yes, finally. I love that. So um, that's good. Oh, he's finally called Green Arrow. Mm -hmm. Colton Haynes should be coming back yeah. uh, sometimes this season, which is good. I like his character. Um, the Thea character is growing on me more and more as it goes along. Yeah. Um, John Berriman is fantastic. Oh, yeah, as, he's he's great at anything Malcolm. he does. Yeah, as Malcolm, he's fantastic. Um, now, I was a big fan of Katie Cassidy when she was in Supernatural, mm -hmm. playing Ruby. Yeah. Not so much now. She's yeah. annoying. I really don't care for her too much as Laurel or mm -hmm. Black Canary. She's, the, it really does feel like they just brought her in as Black Canary just to be Black Canary. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's a nod to the comic book fans, but if you want to do her, do her right. Don't make her this annoying, annoying little woman. Right. And I know I'm going to catch flack for this one, but Felicity's just starting to be so annoying these days. What? Yeah. Uh, I, actually, thinking about that, uh, maybe, but I really did like her in the first couple of episodes. Oh, yes. Yeah. First, first few seasons, really good. But now they started this whole relationship with her and Oliver, and it's turning into... Well, I don't know if this is going to work out between us. I need some time. And he's like, go have some time. And then she's like, she talks to her mother. Well, I don't know. And she, her mother's and I, like. And I like her mother's response. Like, oh, yeah. Get with this dude now. Charlotte Ross does a great job as her mother. <laughs> I remember watching her uh, about 10, 10, 11, 12 years ago on NYPD Blue. Did a great job mm -hmm. playing the cop. Yeah, well, I like that. Now, going over to Flash, what did you think of this season and uh, going back even further, what did you think of the first season as well? This show <laughs> has hit every character on the head like they should. I don't care for Barry Allen in the comics. I find I grew up reading Barry Allen. Yeah. But when I was about when after Christ on Infinite and Earth came out, and uh, I was reading, I was like seventeen, eighteen. That became the Flash that I enjoyed reading. It was Wally West. Um, he had just won the lottery and all this and all this other stuff was going on. Barry Allen bores me to tears in the comic. Yeah, it kind of does that for a lot of people mm -hmm. too. But they made Barry and Wally into one character, and it turned out fantastic. Yes, very much. I have nothing bad to say about that show at all. <laughs> I can, I don't even have. I can't really think of anything else. Um, well. The fact that you're starting to see actual DC Universe villains and characters showing up um, in a recent episode, which is a setup for Heroes of Legends of Tomorrow, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. they brought in this, uh, this young lady who works at the coffee shop that all the guys go to. Mm -hmm. And Cisco was going to ask her out on a date, and she's like, he asked her for her name, and her name was Kendra Saunders. That's Hawk Girl. Yeah. And they brought in King Shark. They brought in Gorilla Grodd. Of all the TV shows ever that have come out based on comic book characters, including Batman, the 1966 series, Flash is doing the best job of bringing in villains that are actually great representations of their comic counterparts. Yes, that being said, I think... Uh Captain Cold is probably the best character, the best villain on the show. Mm -hmm. And I actually do like his and Barry's relationship. They're, I'm not going to hurt you if you stay in my way. I won't kill people if you right. stay, that kind of thing. I, 
I actually thought that him finding out that he was uh, Barry Allen would turn me off a little, but it actually worked. Right. And Harrison Wells, uh, in the current season, from Earth 2, yeah, that guy's so. great because he's, yeah. he's so cocky. I, I like that DC is learning from uh, Fantastic Four, don't kill off your <laughs> villains. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and I like that they can bring back um, the actor for Harrison Wells into another role to bring him back in the same role but mm -hmm. different character. Right. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. And a lot of those guys are just having so much fun on that show. Uh, yeah. I was kind of concerned because a lot of actors that are being cast in a lot of the DC TV series have come from Glee, mm -hmm. since Glee just ended, and um, no problem now. I mean, they, they've, they're they not the teenagers or early 20s guys playing teenagers anymore. They, they're coming into their own on these shows. They're mature and, adults uh, now, yeah. Greg Gustin does a great job as Wally, uh, I, mean, I mean as uh, Barry, uh, the fact that He's now over, or appears to be over, Iris, and he's in a relationship now, yeah. with Patty. He's just got to be careful. And, you know, Iris has no love interest now that Eddie got killed at the end of last season. Um, Reverse Flash was awesome. The best thing, though, was two, was it two or three weeks ago, episode before last, was when Zoom... Oh. Just grabbed Barry oh, yes, yes. and went all over town, just dragging him and went to the police station. And this said, is your hero. This is your hero. And they all fired at him, and he grabbed all the bullets out of the air and just dropped them. Who do you think is Zoom? Who do you presume it is? The rumor that we've been discussing here at the store, and it's probably one of the more popular ones, is it's Henry Allen from Earth 2. That's what I think, too. So, if that comes to fruition... How is Barry going to stop his own dad? <laughs> that That is going to be some heavy stuff right there. Oh, yeah. I mean, you just, you know, you're not going to punch your dad. You're not going to even be forced to kill your dad. Because in the comics, uh, originally when he fought Reverse Flash, um, back in his first series that he had from the 60s, when they, uh, right before Christ on the end of Earth, he was, they thought Iris was killed by the Reverse Flash. And Flash and Reverse Flash were fighting, and Flash killed him, broke his neck, snapped it. And then Flash went on trial, and they found him not guilty, and then he went to the future. Hey guys, I hope you were enjoying the discussion so far. Unfortunately, due to camera failure, we had to cut it short, and now we just decided to turn into a two-part video. So this being part one, we'll be recording part two Monday night and have it up for you guys early Tuesday morning. So keep a lookout for that. Catch you later.